when it comes to percentages, there are three main percentages that are relevant to chemistry syllabus. The first one is percentage by mass, where you try to figure out how much is one element or one portion of a compound compared to the rest of the compound in mass in percentages. We have already seen that in the previous lessons. The second percentage that's important is yield. Yield is basically a way of knowing how much of the expected output is actually being produced. So what we do is that in any question, in any situation, whenever you're doing a reaction, you do expect some output. Now that output could be in terms of mass, in terms of moles, in terms of volume of a gas, for example, basically anything that you're going to get. And you can measure the output, but we also calculate how much of the output we actually can get if the reaction was 100% efficient. Now in reality, most reactions are not 100% efficient, which means is that the output that you calculate will be different from the actual output that you get. And that is why we try to figure out the yield. Yield is how much of the actual output materialized into how much we actually produced. So here's what yield is. Percentage yield comes out to be the actual output or what we call practical output divided by the theoretical output. Theoretical output is the amount that we calculate and we expect to get during a reaction. It's basically the amount that you are going to uh, figure out from moles. So let's take an example of this. Let's suppose we have ammonia being produced and the question says that you can clearly see that one mole of nitrogen should produce two mole of ammonia if it is completely used up. But in reality, something happens, some equipment malfunctions, some reactions are not completed, some are reversible, for example, this one. So in reality, we don't always get what we expect to get. So for example, we are using 140 grams of nitrogen produces 34 grams ammonia. Calculate percentage yield and that's our question now first thing you should do is that whenever you're going to talk about yield ignore the output that you got why because so this right now the 34 gram ammonia this here right now 34 gram ammonia that is the actual output this is the output that they got when they did the reaction but that is not what you should expect what you should expect to get or what the theoretical output depends on 140 grams of nitrogen that you so let's use mole formulas to figure out how much ammonia we should be getting if 140 gram of nitrogen was completely used up. So for this thing, the first thing we need to figure out is the moles of nitrogen. So we know that mole is mass over MR. I have 140 as the mass and 28 as the MR. So that comes out to be five moles. So I have five moles of uh, nitrogen. Now, if I look at the mole ratio, then one mole nitrogen should produce two moles of ammonia, which means five mole nitrogen should produce X. And if I cross multiply, I know it should produce 10 mole ammonia. That's the moles of ammonia I should be getting. And the mass of that comes out to be 10 multiplied the MR of ammonia, which is 17. So that is 170 grams ammonia that I should be getting. That is my theoretical output this is the theoretical output this is what we expect to get if they were to react completely we did not get that we actually got 34 grams so we'll say that the yield or percentage yield will be the actual output which was 34 divided by the theoretical output which was 170 multiplied by 100 percent and when you do that your answer comes out to be just 20 percent so we say that this reaction is 20%, uh, the yield in this reaction is 20%, which means it should produce 100, but it is only producing 20 for a different number of reasons. So that's the idea of percentage yield. The second important idea when it comes to percentages is the percentage purity. 
So syntage purity is basically telling me that if you extract a rock, for example, or an ore, and you are going to get some metal from it that, or something that you're looking for, but the rest of it might be extra. The rest of it might be something that you don't really need. So for example, if you extract iron, we usually get it from hematite. And hematite is a rock that has iron in it, but it's not actually, the whole thing is not iron. It has many, many different impurities. And through purification techniques, we try to separate those impurities. And percentage purity is all about how much of the pure thing is in the impure thing. So if I were to come up with a formula, then percentage purity would be the pure substance divided by the impure substance. And I could talk about the mass, I could talk about the volume. I cannot talk about moles because impure things can't have moles. Impure things are mixtures and mixtures are not pure, which is why they can't have moles. So I could get pure mass or impure mass, or I could get pure gas volume and impure gas volume, multiply by 100%, and that is going to give me the percentage purity. So let's take an example of that. Let's say we have two grams of coal is burned in excess oxygen, it produces 3 dm cube carbon dioxide. What is the percentage purity of carbon in it? So we are assuming that there's only carbon in the coal that is burning, not anything else. And that is the only part that's producing carbon dioxide, nothing else. And that's a fair assumption to make. Now, how do we solve this reaction? First of all, we need to figure out how much carbon was actually present. Now, two grams is the mass of impure coal. That's not the mass of the carbon in there. We need to figure out the mass of carbon, the pure carbon that's in there. So for that, let's make an equation. We have carbon that's burning in excess oxygen. It's important to get excess oxygen because otherwise you can get carbon monoxide or just pure carbon. So that's not relevant here. And we know that we are getting three dm cube of that. Now, if I look at the mole ratio, then I know that one mole of carbon produces one mole of carbon dioxide. So the number of moles of carbon dioxide that I'll have is three divided by 24, which is one divided by eight moles. So that's the moles of carbon dioxide that I have. And because the mole ratio is one to one, that tells me that carbon will also be, the number of moles will also be one by eight moles. Now the mass of that would be one by eight multiplied by 12, which comes out to be three by two or 1.5 grams. And judging by that, I can clearly see that in two grams of coal, I have 1.5 grams of carbon so my percentage purity of carbon in this thing is 1.5, which is the mass of pure carbon, divided by two gram, which is the mass of the impure thing, multiplied by 100%, and that comes out to be 75%. So this coal is 75% pure, and that is percentage purity. 